Hello, everybody. Hello. This is Michelle with Unicorn Spits. I'm tuning in to you guys live from my telephone in Kansas City. So today I have been playing around with a few new ideas on doing fluid art and I stumbled, I should say, into a new technique that I'm pretty sure people haven't seen before. I know I hadn't seen it before, so I'm pretty excited to bring it to you. I'm going to um, jump on my page here, I hope, and be able to be part of your chat. So let me just make sure that my settings are good. Okay. So I can see you guys if you have any questions. Hello, Ramblin' Rome. Okay, so I um, went live today in a private group that um, is a sponsored group, but um, I couldn't hold it back. And I knew that if I didn't let everybody know about this, they would go crazy. So I'm gonna let everybody know. Yes, I'm spilling the beans because I think everybody should do this. Okay, this is what I call ghost pouring. Okay, a ghost pour, a ghost veil. So this is wood. This is just regular wood. This is a scrap piece of wood. But I figured out how to make it so that it was a veil and you could still see the beautiful wood grain like you see here. So let me go ahead and hold that up for you guys to look at it pretty good. I'm giving it my best shot. All right, so you can see that you can see all the wood grain. So it just looks like some beautiful colorful lace over the wood. And what's nice about it, it's smooth. There's no texture. And what would be really nice if I get to playing with this a little bit more would be to stain the wood one color and then do something else. But I don't have time for that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. And this is a piece of scrap wood here. What I have here is um, just some pouring medium. You can use any pouring medium, all right? There's no special pouring medium. You can use the paint extender you can get at the hardware store, or you could use a brand name one. Any of the pouring mediums work, um, I suppose. They all dry clear, but this one I know dries clear. This is just regular old painter's handy flood, and this latex one. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna drive you bananas. I added a little bit of water to this too, just so you know. Um, we're going to make a pillow. Everybody's familiar with making a pillow. So we're going to make a nice pillow. And what's nice, you don't have to worry about covering your entire surface with it. You only need to have the pillow where you want your design. So for me, I'm going to have it about right here. I'm going to have it go from corner to corner. Okay, so there's my pouring medium. I've got some water mixed in because I don't want it to be too... Um, hard, I guess you could call it. And this is the pillow. This is going to be our clear pillow when it dries. I know, mind blown, right? All right, so I'm gonna come in. Now I've got my unicorn spit that's made mixed with the same pouring medium with, um, what do I have here? I think it's five, I think we ended up with five or six parts pour medium because it is so concentrated with um, a little splash of water too. So I'm just going to go ahead and just put a nice little stripe of that in there. So this color here is a mixture of Navajo Jewel, which is our deep turquoise, and our Zia Till, which is our light turquoise. Mixing the two gives you a beautiful Tiffany color. Then I'm going to come in with a little bit of um, Pixie Punk Pink, just like that, right through it. All right. And then I have a bit. I'm going to come in with a just a trickle of some gold, because why not? This is Zeus. This is one of my prototype colors. You can only find those at michellenicoles.com. It's the uh, same concept as Unicorn Spit, except it's metallic. It's just not on the Unicorn Spit market yet. It's still in its prototype stages, which we called the artistic vivations. All right, so we got that on there. Um, it's like three parts flood to one part water. 
it's a very small amount of water. You want it to be about the consistency of like tomato soup. All right, oh, except my flag bottle always gets clogged up because I wish I could invent a pouring medium that doesn't clog because it is ridiculous the amount of clogging I get. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that little bit out. It clogs due to the fact that um, pouring medium is latex and it has latex in it. So yeah, you're gonna get some, some of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just add a little more around the edges here of the pouring medium, just as if you were going to do one of the bloom techniques. But what's wonderful is that we're not gonna have white. It's gonna be clear. So whatever your substrate is, your surface, when it's dry, you'll be able to see it. It's gonna be pretty interesting. Got a blow dryer here, all right? And I've got it with my little pointy gizmo so it can decide which way to shoot the wind. And you're gonna put it on your low setting, so excuse me while this goes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Hopefully you can hear me over it. I'm just gonna come around and I'm gonna push the white and all the colors together. And we're just gonna give it a little spin. And that's it. You don't wanna go too far. It's gonna stop wherever it is. You can come back and like maybe just use a straw or something in that fashion. If you want to move it around, so let's see, what could I use to blow some air? I can use, I don't like to get too close to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a, a, a syringe and I'm gonna, well, I just wanted to come out just a little bit further. Maybe we could give it a little shimmy, but I kind of just want it to stay like that because it really is awfully pretty. Mm, I love it. If you want to, you come around the edges. If you want it to kind of float off into obscurity as opposed to having a harsh ending at the end, which you can do, or you could just add a little bit of water to the very edges of it. And you can see that activates the pouring medium and it also activates the spit, the unicorn spit. You also wanna make sure you do this on a very level, um, a level, here we go, level surface that's gonna help your technique just look better. Okay. And unfortunately my table's not very level. That's okay though. So you get the gist there. May have done just a little bit too much water. Actually, you know what? It's looking pretty cool. Can't complain too hard. All right, so we've got this beautiful technique. You can always come back with a little bit of flame if you want and get some additional cells. And no, I did not add any type of cell activator to this. You can use any of your bloom techniques in order to get the cell activator. Um, but for me, Unicorn Spit already is um, aromatherapy scented. I don't know if you knew that or not, but we use real um, oils um, to enlighten your senses and make you feel all good and relaxed with the jasmine and the regular and the lemongrass and the sparkling. And um, so it already has that little bit of oil, which is nice because it self-absorbs. We, we chose an oil that whenever you go to put the clear coat on, it won't resist it. So you don't have to worry about dusting your pores and things like that off after, um, after you've let them dry and then you wanna pour epoxy. It will not resist it. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I got that going. I'm gonna go ahead and just spread this out a little bit because I can't keep my fingers still because I'm ridiculous, I know. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down. Hi there, Peggy Justice. 
I'm going to just go over it one time here. There we go. I'm going to just kick some of that water off the edges there. Because I really do want it just to kind of swoop off into obscurity. Trick is, I used way too much water when I did this. I don't want it to be too watery. So, you did this, all right? So, what you're going to get when you do the bloom technique is this. You are going to get absolutely beautiful color veiling over your surface. You can see here, because it's not an acrylic paint, there's no ridges and stuff. Um, so it's flat. So it's easy to like paint, not paint over, but seal and put this like on a dresser or a tabletop. And it's not gonna have big ridges that you're gonna have to put thousands and thousands of layers on just to hide and make it look smooth. Spit, it actually absorbs into the wood grain with the bloom little veins that happen. It's absolutely incredible. So you can feel there's no ridge at all whatsoever. It's perfectly slick. Now this does have a protective coating on it already. And it's not an additional one that I put on. It's just how the flow dries. It is a latex base. So this does have a nice protective, well, semi-protective finish. It's like a, like a painted wall um, protective finish. And I would say this is maybe like a satin, but you would always want to do some additional if you're going to like use it as a tabletop or something like this. But this is absolutely incredible. Now this was my, oh, I believe this was my third try possibly on this technique that I, and it, you know, this didn't take very long. And this is my first try ever trying to do the bloom technique by putting all the, um, flood or, or the color around it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring you over another one to look at that I think that you guys will find really beautiful. I know I sure do, and um, it's my favorite. <laughs> it's my total favorite, I'm bringing you in real close here. So this is all using a clear pillow for my pour. All the white you see, that is not white paint. That is the white of the white piece of wood that I did my pour on. You can see all the wood grain. It's absolutely clear. But the only thing that doesn't disappear is the super concentration of unicorn spit and it stays suspended in that medium and it dries completely smooth. So the you, you can epoxy it and get a super 3D look, but you could also use wax to finish it and different things like that. So I think this really is just phenomenal. And here I just, I just took my syringe full of Zeus, which is our 24 karat gold, and um, did some some veining, some line work in there using it. You can see it's kind of foil-like. It's very foily. It's, it's, it's like pure, my God, it's crazy. And you can see how strong it is. So this is all stained into the wood. Well, with the exception of the gold. I put it on so thick it was like a paint. But you can see every bit of that wood grain and you get those fine little details of a pour, and this was I think my second or third, fourth try, fourth try doing it. I didn't get the bloom effect as much as I really wanted, but I didn't care. I really liked how it turned out. And I'm sure that people who have more experience with doing the bloom techniques can probably rock it maybe a little bit better than I did. So with unicorn spit, you can do a clear pillow. And I call it, ghosting. I don't know if I should call it um, a color veil, but yes, everywhere on this piece that you see that white tone is the natural white wood of this piece. There's no white paint. So all of this 
it just disappeared and allowed the unicorn spit to fall through and pigment that wood perfectly. And it dries 100% just flat. The only ridges I can fill are that of the actual wood. I should have sanded it a little bit first, but it doesn't really matter. So I wanted to tune in and let you guys see this. It is amazing. It is so fun. You can do, you don't have to do the bloom technique. You can do any of the techniques that need a pillow. If you want a clear pillow so you can see what's underneath it, maybe a photograph or something that you painted, um, Unicorn Spit works. Whoops. Unicorn Spit works perfectly for that. So, all right, guys. Well, I just wanted to have you guys celebrate with me in this new discovery of clear pillows for your acrylic pores or your unicorn spit pores or your fluid art or whatever it is. Um, unicorn spit works so good on it. And I believe that it's because unicorn spit does not have plastics in it like a um, an acrylic or a latex paint. It's absent of all plastics, so it's pure concentrated pigment. That's why you always have to dilute it with a clear um, catalyst, um, unless you wanna use it straight, which is like a paint. Ooh, look at that, where it wisps out. That's really beautiful. Um, you guys can just do anything you want. I mean, and the, the biggest notion for me is, is this perfectly smooth surface with no ridges like you would with a plastic filled paint that's just super phenomenal especially for somebody who um, likes to do artistic work on usable surfaces like tabletops countertops and such you want to make sure that you have a nice smooth surface and now we figured it out and now you can see the wood grain where before we used to have to like cover it up this makes it so you can see the wood grain and see the value in the product in which you're working on, that it's not just some poster board junk, that you're working on real, you know, earth-grown wood, which is very expensive right now. Terribly expensive. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope this inspires you guys to reduce, reuse, recycle, turn it into art, and to think outside the box and imagine arting on a clear pillow. Till I see you guys again, be good, be blessed, and always let your creative juices flow. Good night.